ZZ Mills sat down with Steph London for an interview, and I guess they have already their own beef. From what I can understand, reading between the lines, ZZ Mills and Steph London have their own little passer going on. They don't like each other. They've had bad runnings with each other. I don't know. Either way, this is meant to be like a big interview. People are really hyped about it. But there's a clip that people are talking about here on the Shade Borough um, where she addresses her controversial comments about nine to five workers. So I'm curious to see what Steph London said about nine to five workers. This should be good. She might have said something very toxic and funny. Let's see what Steph London had to say about 95 workers. So I was coming out of my studio. I used to okay. have a studio on Tottenham Court Road. Right. And right next to it was Planet Organic. So I was leaving at six in the, five, six in the morning. Right. And people were in there setting up. So I'm like, bro, if you're setting up at five, six, that means you had to get up at like three in the morning and come here. Right. And basically work for <laughs> Trump change. <laughs> I'm already laughing. I'm already laughing. I love Steph London. I'm going to back her. That's my fucking girl. Already the beginning of the story already sounds bad. So you were at a studio. You were having your, living your life as a musician. This privileged life that not a lot of us can live. Where you get to chase your dreams. Chase your fucking interests that you had since you were a kid. Live out all your great, live out all your fantasies and stuff. You're recording music in the center of London and it's a great place you're popping out to get yourself a little one two rubicon and then you walk past the shop and you see people setting up you know it's a retail store right people have to set up in the morning and the first thing that comes to mind is oh look look at how much better i am than these people the first thing that comes to your mind when you walk past this shop is oh my god i'm so happy i'm so much better than these people <laughs> You immediately start fucking job shaming, poor shaming and shit. I rate it. I rate it because I think most people have these thoughts in their head. Most people do, especially if you work in the arts or you're a creative person or God forbid you're an influencer. I'm sure influencers look down on people for sure. Especially if they go like, to a coffee shop and they see some kid about their age serving them coffee. They definitely look down on them. They definitely make them feel like shit. And they definitely in their own heads without even saying it. But maybe, you know, um, uh, giving that aura that they think they're better than that person. Like, oh my God, I would never work here. Ugh. I'd rather die than work in a coffee shop. All this sort of shit. So I rate this energy already. Already I'm rating this energy from fucking Steph London. Let's fucking go. So that's how I worded it. Well, yeah, what oh yes, now yeah. I remember. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't mad at the workers. I'm mad at the... The employers employing these people giving them chump change i'm like right, okay. this person has to get up at three in the morning to be here <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's still that's i get what she's trying to say good message probably the worst messenger decent message maybe the worst messenger and maybe the way that she worded it probably would didn't come across the best but still i rate the rudeness i rate the upfront rudeness i rate it so much i love people that are just honest and are just completely themselves. Let's go, Steph London. Shit on these retail workers. Shit on these nine to fivers. Shit on these people. Who would work a nine to five? Ugh, man, that's disgusting. <laughs> Basically, and you're giving them chump change. So that's what the story is. Okay. And I explained it on my story after because before chump change, <laughs> I don't get out of bed for less than a fucking ten grand, mate. Like what? Six pound an hour? What? <laughs> <laughs> nothing on my body is <laughs> is less than a hundred pounds six pounds an hour any blog caught wind some of my followers started messaging me like what do you mean it's trump change i was like nah i'm talking about why are they getting trump change for such okay let's next slide big job i feel right, like they okay. deserve more money yeah so that's what i was saying oh so she was fighting for the workers rights she's advocating she's actually advocating for workers she's not this this she's not taking the piss out of them She's not taking the piss out of retail workers. She's advocating for them. She's using her platform, using her position in life to say, you know what? I'm going to reach down and I'm going to pull you guys up, but not on my level. I'm just going to pull you up by your pinky so people can see this mess of a situation you're in and advocate for you to get more money. Then I'm going to drop you back down where you're at. But I'm advocating for you. I'm not taking the piss out of you when I'm walking past your retail store at four in the morning in my lovely, amazing Gucci gown or something on my way to go get a one, two drink for my studio session with my little fucking Birkin bag. I'm not looking down on you. I'm actually annoyed that you don't get paid more. You should actually get paid way more. You guys deserve to be paid as much as fucking lawyers. Like, what? And so then I explained it. I explained it in the, another story. But then obviously Shea Borough just took it. Yeah. And then it was like, you're cussing people, Trump changed. And then I didn't feel like 
to defend myself because <laughs> I just felt like that's not what I said. Stop and change. if you go to my story, I've explained it. And you just choose not to. So I just never always, I never felt like to defend, which probably is wrong. Mm -hmm. I feel like now looking back, I love the arrogance, man. honestly. I love the arrogance of like saying something that a lot of people don't agree with and that is demonstrably wrong and then not having the humility to explain why you said it or to maybe walk it back a little bit or whatever. You're just like, fuck you. I said what I said. If you, got, you took it the wrong way, you took it the wrong way. I love it, man. I love it. I fucking love it. Her attitude fucking stinks, but I don't mind her. I honestly don't mind her because she's real. You know, she's the kind of person that would maybe, you know, you probably would, you probably should be wary about asking her for a picture if you see her out, especially if you're a guy. She might, she might make you feel like a fucking, like a cockroach, but I rate that she's consistently her. She doesn't fake the funk. Yo, yo, big up fashion road, man. Wild one, wild one. Trump change, you know? Yeah, she's the best. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I like, I, li I like Steph London. She seems very toxic. She seems very rude. She's the kind of person who legitimately judges you based on what you're wearing, what car you're driving, what's on your watch and shit. She seems to be very materialistic and shit, but I like it. I like how vapid, shallow and materialistic that she is because at least she's honest about who she is. I like Steph London. Let's go. Okay, so I guess the, the, that's the original post. The original post that she put up that got her in trouble says the following. How could you wake up every day and work for someone else's dream for some chump change? I'll never. Oh, my God. She lied. She lied. <laughs> what she said originally was clearly way worse than how she's trying to make it seem. How could you wake up every day and work for someone else's dream for some chump change? I'll never understand that. Babe, some people don't have a choice. Some people aren't lucky enough to become like a, you know, a, a very successful and very famous rapper, you know, that also happens to date one of the most successful African artists of his generation or of all time. Do you know what I mean? Not all of us have that kind of luck. <laughs> some of us have to <laughs> work <laughs> regular nine to fives for some chump change. That is, that is our, that is our luck in life. And it's funny too, because those chump changes, I bet you probably make up the majority of our audience. The people that do work these shitty nine to five jobs that she looks down upon are probably the people that go to her shows, buy her merch, you know, watch her on fucking IG live, send questions in, you know, like all her pictures and shit. And here she is taking a piss at them. I love it. I love it. I love it because I think most creatives and most artists probably do look down on their fans anyway and they think less of them. So I do like that she's at least being honest with that. The next slide here, what's it say? Um somebody oh somebody replied to her so somebody replied to her on snapchat and said it's called real life love we don't all have the opportunity money or situation to follow our own dreams children feed children to feed and pay bills to pay well, exactly that's that's very true that's very true but i think that's always the case with people who achieve their dreams people who achieve their dreams always have a tendency i don't, I don't know why it is though i, I would always wonder why because i i would always think to myself like if ever you get an opportunity to achieve your dreams, whatever your dreams are, I would imagine that it would make you more humble. It would make you more understanding of why people do other things apart from chase their dreams, right? Because you probably spent a long time chasing your dreams. On the journey of chasing your dreams, you had probably had to do some things that you probably wouldn't, wouldn't have wanted to do to get to the point where you achieved your dreams. You get what I mean? But for some reason, it has the opposite effect. When people do achieve their dreams and do make it, if anything, it makes them have like contempt for people who haven't made it. And I'm like, hold on. Like, why would you have contempt for us when you know how hard it is to get to where you got to? So if that's the case, a lot of people aren't going to be willing to put up with that battle or that fight or that journey to get to where you are. So some people would rather just be like, you know what, I'd rather just work a normal job and live my life that way. I'd be happier doing that than trying to chase my dreams and then, you know, have the, you know, the nightmare situation where I don't, I don't make it and I've invested all this time, all this money, all this emotion into it. And now I, the thing that I wanted all my life, I don't fucking achieve it. So I understand why some people are like, you know what, I don't want it. Or the general thing is most people just don't have lofty dreams. They just want to work. They want to make some money. They want to go on their one-two holidays, support their kids, go out for a drink or shit, buy some new trainers here and there, and that's it. That's what most people probably want. But I never understood people who achieve their dreams looking down on people that don't want to have any lofty dreams. It's fucking bizarre to me. I've, I, I've never really understood that mindset. 
But anyway, she replied to the girl who said it's called a real life love. We don't all have the opportunity, money or situation to follow our own dreams. Children to feed, bills to pay. She replied to that girl and said, real life, you don't have opportunity. You create them. They are not given. I understand we all can't all be the same, but the reason anyone works for chump change most of the time is a mindset. And they don't... <laughs> she sounds like a Forex trader. She sounds like one of those crypto guys. It's your mindset, man. If you think about being rich, if you imagine driving a Range Rover Sport, if you imagine driving a Bentley, if you imagine having an AP, if you just think about it enough, you'll get it. That's what she's basically doing. Yo, this woman is fucking brilliant, man. She she sat there in front of ZZ Mills and boldface lied about what she said because what she said originally is way worse than how she made it seem on the fucking show. That is kind of rude. And it's also a weird thing to think about when you're walking out of a studio, right? On the way to go get a drink or something. Like the first thing you think about is like shitting on people. <laughs> <laughs> you walk out of your studio that's serviced by people working for chump change everyone that's working in that studio who isn't a musician is probably working for chump chains right the person that cleans it the person that maintains the equipment and shit is technically a chump changer but then you leave the studio and you're now looking down on the people who are working jobs that allow you to achieve your dream or maintain your dream i don't know i find it fucking funny but again i still like steph london she's still my girl um so big up Steph London, big up her for being unapologetically rude as fuck. I fucking love it. I fucking love it.